hello today we'll be starting off our class with kinematics uh, kinematics comes under mechanics uh, what do you mean by the term mechanics it's a large branch of study though mechanics so mechanics is just the study of rest or motion of any object rest or motion of any object now what kind of object are we speaking about object is nothing but matter now we are not dealing with matter right now but still what is matter anything that has mass and occupies space is known as matter so that is a separate thing to be dealt with so we are not getting involved into what are matters that is in the first chapter so we will straight away move to mechanics mechanics can be segregated or divided to three parts that is classified to three parts that is statics and then the next one is kinematics that is our topic of discussion and next is dynamics statics kinematics and dynamics these are the three things so statics the word means to be at rest kinematics means in motion and dynamics the third term deals with the cause of motion right and we are more concerned about kinematics so before moving over to kinematics this topic it's a huge scale of study there's a completely large uh, thing to understand but we'll be considering a chapter out of it our chapter of concern will be motion in a straight line that is the motion of an object along a straight line so when we are considering the motion in a straight line we will be discussing first what is motion right so two states are to be dealt with in kinematics states means we are considering situations so what are the two types of situations that we will be discussing in kinematics they are the two one of the two is rest and the other one is motion so what are these things now when is a body said to be in a state of rest now if it does not change its position with respect to its immediate surroundings then it is said to be in a state of rest as far as the definition goes now what does that mean it it means that uh, okay we'll focus on the words right now does not change its position with respect to its immediate surroundings now what do you mean by this term surroundings and immediate surroundings now we can take an example over here that we i have considered an object right and it is surrounded by five other objects as you can see in the picture and that circle that i have drawn is the immediate or very close surrounding and they are having positions r1 r2 r3 r4 and r5 these are the positions of those objects with respect to the surroundings right and these uh, positions if they are not changing yes as you can see they have been ticked now that is r1 r2 r3 r4 and r5 if those positions do not change whatever happens may any force anything is applied if the positions r1 r2 and up to r5 they do not change in their value then the objects are said to be in a state of rest with respect to one another now these objects they will be at rest uh, and uh, the next thing that we consider is an example if we are considering two people to be seated in the respective seats in a compartment of a moving train and they do not change their positions right then they are said to be in a state of rest with respect to each other here the two people that are that we have considered are the objects their respective seats are their positions and the compartment that we are considering is the immediate surrounding that we had discussed previously so two people or the objects 
they are the positions are fixed with respect to the immediate surroundings and hence they can be said to be in a state of rest now just uh, as we can see obviously when seen from the platform or from the outside of the compartment for a person standing on the platform or outside they are not at rest as the train is moving but it is outside and outside is not the immediate surrounding okay so the outside part is not the immediate surrounding so that is why we cannot uh, really say that they are in motion we are considering only the immediate surrounding as far as the uh, definition is concerned or as we have defined it right now so what will be our uh, our opinion on motion of an object when can a body said to be in a state of motion obviously when it changes its position there in rest it was not changing its position with respect to immediate surrounding here it changes its position with respect to its immediate surrounding which is quite simple to understand and again we can consider that same example that if the two people in the compartment they start changing their positions with respect to one another then they will be said to be in a in motion with respect to one another okay the compartment here again is the immediate surrounding and in that immediate surrounding they have started changing their positions and that is why they are said to be in motion so after studying all this we will move over to we have classified rest and motion right now so we'll be moving over to the topic in kinematics that is motion in a straight line and uh, the motion in a straight line can further be classified in one dimension two dimension and three dimensional motion now what are these uh, one two and three dimension dimension basically means the coordinate system that we are considering the coordinate system the motion in the coordinate system that we have studied so far in schools so motion in one dimension deals with the motion along any one of the coordinates that is x y or z axis if a body is moving only along x or only along y or only along z axis then it is under one dimensional motion so either the x axis y axis or the z axis that we consider any one of these three axis is any one any one of these three axis if the motion is along any one then it is a one dimension in two dimension obviously the motion is in two dimension the motion will be along two axis two axis means either x y or y z or z x so it will so because we are considering two axis they are planes right now so x y the plane we can consider x y plane and if it moves from uh, any object moves from the point 1 to the point 2 then it is moving in the x y plane and similarly if we are considering the uh, y z plane that will come right now so in the y z plane also if a body is moving from point 1 to point 2 then it is uh, also a two dimensional motion where it is moving along the y z plane and next the third case that we can consider is the x z plane so there you can see the x and the z planes and from the point 1 to the point 2 if an object moves then it is moving along the z x plane and the motion is obviously considering two dimensions so here two dimensions are involved x and y y and z z and x so these are the basic things that we come across in dimension case then we consider the three dimensional motion that is the 3d as we call it the three dimensional motion obviously involves all the three axes the axis that we are considering that is x y and z uh, x axis y axis and z axis put together this is a 3d or three dimensional coordinate system that is our space the space we live in it is three dimensional okay and in that three dimension if an object starts to move from the point one to the point two as you can see in the figure 
then the motion is a three dimensional motion now as you can see i have pointed out the coordinates suppose one has the coordinate x1 y1 and z1 and 2.2 .2 has the coordinates x2 y2 and z2 so the values of all the three coordinates are changing over here that is x1 as you can see uh, the point 1 and the point 2 the motion between that x1 changes to x2 y1 changes to y2 and z1 changes to z2 as they have been ticked so all the three things are changing so what happens in 2d only two coordinates values are changing that is when you are considering x and y only x y values are changing y and z plane y and z values are changing y12 y2 z1 to z2 and zx similarly x and z values are changing so it is two dimensional motion now similarly uh, when we are considering only a single one dimensional motion only one coordinate changes value obviously the other two remain constant because it is moving along only a single axis that is either x or y or z so depending on the axis here its values will be changing that is uh, x y z so that gives uh, brings us to the end of today's discussion hope you have learned something and uh, your queries and doubts you can bring them on till then thank you